Good morning, everyone. How are you today? You guys from uh, from Faktis, from uh, from Idret. You weren't with us last time. How was uh, Ukta? Was it good? Yeah. I heard rumors that you had a good time in a cottage. <laughs> Yeah, were you happy about that, or would you prefer a tent, <laughs> as you were supposed to? <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, today, uh, as you can see from this um, PowerPoint, we are going to talk about global perspectives. We are uh, getting to an end of this course. We've been looking at NIF, the NIF system, the Norwegian sports system basically. We have been looking at um, different sides of this system, the volunteerism as a very, very big part of, uh, of sports. Next time we're going to talk about professionalization of sports. And then we're not talking about um, professional players. We're talking about sport and the sports system as a profession, which I think, I know many of you will eventually work in this sector. Last time we were talking about <coughs> what we may term the dark sides of sport. We watched a film and we were talking a little bit about what, what it is about sports that is not so positive, because that needs to be our in order to understand sports, and in order to understand the field in which some of you are going to, going to work, you need to understand that sport is not only a positive factor, we've been talking about that earlier too, creates divisions, gender divisions, social divisions, etc. So we need to also have that perspective in mind, not because we want to be critical, but we need to, in order to understand this phenomenon, we need to accept that there are two different views on it. For those of you who were uh, following the Olympic, um, at least you, the Olympic um, session yesterday, this guy who was presenting was pretty critical, wasn't he? Yeah. he he's not, it wasn't negative to the Olympic or the Olympics, but it's a critical view because there are some problems that we need to acknowledge in order to understand the phenomenon. And that's important for you. If there is one thing that you learn from this course, it is to be analytical and not critical, but to be, yeah, to be analytical means to also see those sides that are not necessarily positive, uh, positive um, uh, that, and yeah. First of all, I need to ask, how are you doing? I heard you had an injury. Is it okay? Yeah. Did you break something? Ah. It's a, that's a sports injury. That's cool. <laughs> that's one of the sports dark sides that we talked about last time. <laughs> um, today, we are going to talk about global perspectives. And uh, there are, of course, many things that would be very interesting to talk about today when it comes to global issues, international issues, we were, uh, if, if more of you, or if you had been to that uh, lecture yesterday, did you like it? Did you enjoy the lecture? Yeah? It was really yeah? yeah. And that was um, an Olympic perspective. There are many things to this global perspectives that would have been interesting to, uh, to discuss. But when we talk about global perspectives, global sports, what do you think then? What, what's the first thing that pops in your head? When I say s global sports, what are you thinking about? Or that sports is global? Uh, sports, they, they got all over the world. Spread it, spread all over, yeah. All over. <laughs> Other things? 
That's a specific sport. Other thing, the sporting codes, right? Global sports, what is that? What is that concept? What does it entail? If I give you a hint and I say market, what do you think about then? Global sports market. We have um, big brands such as Adidas, Nike, Puma. They're everywhere, right? They're global brands, although they're stemming from somewhere. We have flow of players. We know footballers, whatever, sports really, that is flowing. Like transfers. transfers, for instance, so part of the global sports economy. It runs sports. It's part of this global sports movement. Competitions. Such as World Cups, Olympics. Olympics, they're global. Which was different from what it used to be, right? Local settings. So nowadays we say that the world of sport is more or less, in the Olympic wars, we're like one big happy family, right? We do the same, we play the same sports, we play against each other. We um, drink the same drinks and we have the same jerseys, etc., etc. So one may, may argue that sports is global. We will talk a little bit about the term globalization. You heard that word, right? Globalization. It's a very common term to use. It's not unproblematic because nobody really knows what it is. They don't really agree what this is, so we might as well not use that term. But we will discuss it a little bit still. But our, our starting point must be that sport is considered a global movement. It's all over. Okay? Today. Oh, no. <laughs> Hang on. Today we're not going to do that. And that wasn't the... You can talk. <laughs> I just pull, uh, emailed uh, the newest presentation and that wasn't it. So I will just try to find... Okay, this is what we're doing today. This is a nice illustration of the global game, right? The global sports. So what we're going to do first is an, a little bit of a warm-up. We're sports people, so we need to warm up. This is a warm-up in our brains, first of all. Then we're going to talk about sport and culture. National identity. Sport as a national expression. I think we all have an idea of what our national sport is, for instance, uh, what this national, cultural, um, what, what does that ha has to do with each other. We're going to discuss the word globalization. And then um, I'm going to give you an example of a Norwegian um, a Norwegian attempt to spread Norwegian ideas to the world. 
as part of a globalized sports se setting. This is uh, what I've been researching myself. So I will give you a, a presentation of this. But first, we need this, uh, we're going to do this warm up. And then, in order for us to have an effective warm up, we need to have some, um, some understandings uh, clear. First of all, uh, when it comes to sport, in order to understand sport, we need to understand that it's not politically, as we talked about yesterday too, it's not politically neutral. Sport and politics, some people argue it's got nothing to do with each other. Well, that is wrong. We have to have that as a starting point. It does have something to do with each other. We need to understand that and acknowledge that. Also socially, economically, sport is not neutral. Um, as we will see today. There is somebody, or not somebody maybe, but there are some dominating actors in the sporting world, in the global industry. And there are also some that are not heard at all. So that needs to be the outset. And we also need to realize that, as I said earlier, sport has positive and negative features. We need to understand that in order to understand sport. And we need to accept it. And sometimes we need to <coughs> ask questions that are not as comfortable to answer if you love sports. But still you need to, uh, to ask those questions. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, how many were we? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. I think I have... We can get, uh, sit together two and two, and then there are five statements here. These are common statements. We hear them all the time, right? Sport promotes well-being and health, creates social mobility, communities are brought together uh, to, through sport, etc., etc. Now I want you to take one statement each, and then I want you to find evidence, positive. <coughs> Evidence that underpins or underlines this statement, but also negat or, um, yeah, negative or, or critical things to this uh, particular statement. For instance, sport promotes health and, health and well-being. Yes, it does. But does it always? Where's the evidence? Search online, try to find articles, uh, something to, to um, build up in your argument. And then, uh, when you've had a pro and con, I want you to find an example from your own life or contemporary society or historical examples, whatever, um, to show or to, um, yeah, to show the, the statement. Do you understand what you're going to do? Yeah? You managed to make groups? So, the, uh, Simon or uh, uh, Iver? Ivor and Simon, <laughs> statement one, statement two, Trigva Kratunen, Thomas, four, no, three, four, oh, then it's a big group, five, okay? Or one of you can join uh, Thomas or Trigva. No, you just now back to that two. Iris, du kan gå och vara samman med bara den gruppen på fyra, på tre. Sports help people to socialize, so you need to socialize. <laughs> Excellent. The last one. I'll give you 15 minutes to find these pros and cons and uh, uh, things to support your um, findings. And then we will present to each other, not present like very fashionably, but we will, we will present our statements.